family is uh, traditionally we are doing uh, farming. My uh, grandfather, father, my mother. Uh, after my mother, I took the uh, in charge of farming from my mother. Now my son is uh, following me. So I am having 60 years of experience. After finishing my studies, uh, uh, I uh, took the uh, uh, responsibility for my mother. Because my mother became old and my elder brother requested me to uh, take this uh, responsibility. And uh, my elder brother's name is Sir Ramakrishnan. He is my first guru. He, uh, he taught me uh, the chemical farming. So uh, in the beginning, uh, uh, he, uh, yeah, he was the regional manager for a multinational company. So he guided me in organic farming. So I came along with the Green Revolution. During that period, only Green Revolution was introduced. So during that period, I, entered, I came in. So my, uh, my brother will be guiding him for uh, uh, do cultivation of crops. crops. Uh, at the same time, he will be sending the scientists of their company uh, to come and guide me. So uh, uh, seeing my interest, uh, they learned me, uh, I learned a lot from them. So first 30 years was, uh, uh, my farm was a research and development farm for that uh, uh, fertilizer pesticides company. So uh, I had the exclusive opportunity to learn all technical aspects of chemical farming. Now I, I, I had another guru, one Mr. S. N. Nagarajan. Uh, my brother is 91 years old, Nagarajan is 94 years old. Uh, Nagarajan uh, is an environmentalist. He, in the beginning, introduction of the Green Ocean itself, he says, this is not good for us. Later, later years, land degradation will take place and the whole society will get new, new diseases. So, uh, doctors, hospitals, medical companies, they will uh, flourish well. Uh, like that, he, in the beginning itself, he told. But uh, I had that statement in my mind uh, and it came true 25 years later only. I raised the, this uh, chemical farming is not a sustainable farming, sustainable farming. I realized only 25 years later only I realized, realized. why that you must understand. All these 30 years my farm is under research. So every year I will be applying heavy farm yard manure for crops. Then only I was using fertilizer and all. In that condition itself, every year the fertilizer application dosage increasing step by step. And in the beginning, the pesticides was uh, used at the rate of 5 ml in 10 liters of water. Only 5 ml in 10 liters of water. It controlled all kinds of pests. But 25 years later, the same pest to control, we were forced to use 60 ml in 10 liters of water. 12 times increased, dosage increased in 25 years. Then only I realized my second guru's statement, oh, this is not a, a sustainable activity. So fertilizer is increasing and the fertilizer cost is going up. Pesticides usage is increasing. It is also going up. And third item, pesticide, herbicide, that is all going up. So what happened, the cost of cultivation going up and my income return started coming down. Though I take, took the yield, but the cost is more, the income is reduced. So I decided to change. So five years I was going in and around in search of organic farming. Then I understood the basic principles of organic farming. In the meantime, uh, here in Tamil Nadu, Namalwar was the number one person to propagate uh, this organic farming in Tamil Nadu. So I got the opportunity to work with him for five years. During that five years, I, uh, I had discussion with, my, uh, with Namalwar. It is not uh, uh, enough uh, giving awareness of organic farming. We must give solutions organic solutions to the farmer to cultivate practically. Uh, so he told that uh, has to be decided by the uh, farmer only. We, we have to give awareness only. Then the farmer has to think on his own and he has to do everything uh, uh, according to the condition prevailing there. Like that he told. Now I told him, you are correct. I do agree. 
your approach is i do agree but what happened all these 50 years under monocropping when i get any problem and when you go to any fertilizer shop he will give you uh, you have to use this this like that he will tell we will be using that fertilizer or pesticides that is how we are, we are having experience only why we are using so much why uh, why to use that pesticide that principle we don't know so now if you want to uh, convert a farmer to grow organically you have to give them the practices also for that uh, uh, he is not willing to do it so uh, myself along with uh, uh, my uh, 10 uh, organic farmers from uh, different districts of tamil nadu uh, started uh, tamil nadu farmers technology association in that uh, association uh, we started giving two day training program for farmers in satyamangala for that uh, my guru narayan reddy uh, every month he will come here he is a uh, narayan reddy is a uh, organic farmer based at uh, uh, bangalore rural district dot pellapura he is a uh, practitioner he is a uh, organic farming encyclopedia you have to say what type of problem you tell for any crop he will give you solution and how to grow crop well how to uh, control pests how to control diseases organically all those things i learned from him uh, he came here he, every month he gave so much uh, for priority for our association and every month he will come and he will give lecture i will note down everything and i will uh, adopt it immediately so he uh, uh, from him i l- learned how to have good crop growth pest disease control then another guru is dabolka he is a math professor of uh, maharashtra pune university he along with uh, 21 academic people they started doing organic uh, research and they named their organic practices as, as nature eco culture along with 500 farmers in and around maharashtra they started doing research 1948 to 1998 50 years and they published one book plenty for all in that book it has given how to improve the fertility of the soil and how to improve the organic matter in the soil and how to improve the humus content and organic carbon content in the soil all those activities uh, i learned from him so he is the second guru then one mr balakrishnan of tanjavur he is uh, the elder brother of namalwar he taught me about uh, the microorganisms in the soil how they are working all those things i learned from him then in the horticultural crops all hot, uh, uh, fruit trees one mr basker sawe you would have heard about him basker sawe i learned from him so these four gurus are my uh, the base to understand uh, to uh, practice organic farming here so when i go wherever i go uh, those uh, farmers who are coming here I will tell first my gurus and I will tell oh, they are, my gurus are going to talk to you through Sundarman voice. That is very, very important now. So now the Borg is going to talk to you now how to improve the soil fertility. Okay. Now you are having different types of soil. Whatever may be the different types of soil, top layer nine inches only, you are having the microbial activity. Top layer. 9 inches only, you are having the microbial activity. Soil may be different. Activity is only 9 inches. So, though it is a, you are having different types of soil, he classified into three groups. Soil, less fertile, fertile, more fertile. Now, he takes the fertile soil. In the fertile soil, top layer, you must have 10% microbial activity. The top layer, that microbial activity, you must have 10%. By using this uh, fertilizers and all, the microbial activity is uh, only 3%. Now, if you want to bring it to fertile condition, you have to improve the microbial population to 10% now. Understand? To improve the microbial population to that extent, you have to feed the microbes now. You can feed the microbes in two forms. 
that is called animal waste and plant waste. Animal waste means uh, cow dung manure, sheep or goat manure, poultry manure, compost, vermicompost, all items are under animal man manure, animal waste. Plant waste, uh, you, uh, we are farmers are having the habit of uh, broadcasting sun hemp or uh, dencha about uh, in the field. Allow it to grow for uh, 60 days or 75 days or 45 days. And when it is grow and uh, using rotavator tractor, they will be plow in situ. The tractor are you having in Andhra? It is there. So if you grow any plant and plow in situ, it is called plant waste. So either in the form of animal waste or in the form of plant waste, you have to apply to the soil as a feed for the microbes. Okay. So here he gives a, a solution, multi-variety seed sowing he gives to improve the biomass in the soil. He gives multi-variety seed sowing. You take four varieties in grains, four varieties in oil seeds, four varieties in pulses, four varieties in N-giving plants, nitrogen-giving plants, and four varieties from spices. So five heading, each four varieties, five into four, 20 varieties of seeds you collect. All put together for one acre, 20 kg per seed. You broadcast and irrigate regularly and allow it to grow for 30 days or to 40 days. Plow in situ. Again, second time, the same second time sow the seeds. Allow it to grow for 60 to 70 days. Plow in situ. And again, third time you sow the same seeds and allow it to grow for 100 days and plow in situ. By doing this, Three times, you will be adding about 50 to 60 tons of plant waste to the soil now. If it is that it will, for this, it will take 200 days to do it. If you do it in 200 days, you can bring the soil to the brim fertile condition. That is the principle he told. And another interesting thing, by practice, it is not practically possible for farmers to wait for 200 days to do the job. So, uh, based on this principle, uh, we simplified the process now. We select uh, about 10 to 12 varieties of uh, seeds in this five category that are easily available locally. That is very, very important. All mixed together, you take 30 kilos of seeds per acre, broadcast it and allow it to grow for 60 days and plow in situ. Thereby, you will be adding about 15 to 20 tons of uh, plant waste to the soil. Then add some quantity of uh, cow dung manure, sheep, something like that you add. And you start cultivation. That is what we suggested, uh, practically suggesting the farmers. Uh, if you do like this, uh, steadily your la land will become fertile. So whatever crop you grow, and when it is harvested, you do this multi-variety sowing, plow in situ, then next crop. By doing this, every time your soil will steadily, the fertility will be improving. It is not necessary to wait for 200 days. That is what we are telling. Another thing, now you must understand. What is the relationship between the soil, microbes and the plants that grow there? This is very, very important. Then only if you understand the basic principles of this organic farming, then you adopt organic farming, then you will be a successful man. So you first understand what is soil uh, and the microbes in it. Soil is not a dead thing, it's a living thing. So you are having thousands and thousands of uh, uh, microbes are there and plant is growing. What is the relation between, between the three? And already the Bolkar says, top layer nine inches only, you are having the microbial activity. Below that, you are having earthworm activity. Let us come to earthworm activity later. First, let us understand the activity of the microbes now. Okay? So, here, in the top layer, nine inches, the microbes, they need residence to stay. They cannot... Uh, now we are living in a house. Like that, the microbes need residence to stay there. All feeder roots are the residence for the uh, microbes to stay. 
the hair line, hair, hair like uh, feeder roots, you know, that feeder roots are the residents for the microbes to stay. In feeder roots, number of juices are secreted. That juices are used by the microbes for their uh, family development. Thereby, they, uh, their population is increasing. So what happened now? The plant has given residence for the microbes and also some juices for their development. So there is a coexistence activity happens now. So the microbes now think. So he has given us residence and also food for our family. We have to help him in some other way. So uh, some microbes are there. They absorb nitrogen from air and supplies for the plant. And you are having a uh, rich of phosphorus and potash in the soil naturally. But uh, that uh, phosphorus and potash are not directly available for the plant to take. It is in unavailable form. So some microbes are there. They digest the phosphorus available in the soil in available form and it is absorbed by the plant. Similarly, unavailable K is made available by that potash mobilizing bacteria and it is used by the plant. Similarly, for a crop to grow in a, a, in a conventional farming by a fertilizer, they say you must give 17 times of 1-7, 17 types of major macro micronutrients for the crop. All those 17 types of microbes are there in the soil. Now we are developing those microbes and we are giving feed for them. So they convert everything and the corresponding nutrients are converted by the microbes now and it is readily available for the feeder roots to absorb. So what are all the organic matter or animal waste you are applying is the food for the microbes. Microbes, they digest it and make different types of nutrients there. That nutrient is absorbed by the plant now. So here you must understand in chemical farming, you are giving N, P and K and all micronutrients artificially. When you apply and when it is dissolved in water, that nutrient is readily available for the feeder to absorb. So in that case, you are giving artificially. Whereas here, the microbes are work, work as a mother there and they convert the organic matter into various nutrients which is absorbed by the plant. So in, orga, in our organic farming, whatever crop you grow, you are not giving feed for the crop at all. You are feeding the microbes. That microbes convert all types of nutrients and that is absorbed by the plant. This is the difference between the chemical farming and organic farming. Now I ask you, where, which type of uh, uh, plant will be healthier now? Whether by applying artificial or giving natural. For that we give an example also. A mother gives birth, she gives birth to a baby. But the mother is not having sufficient mother milk to feed. So immediately she gives a powder, uh, uh, a by powder milk, mixes it in water and gives. And one uh, mother gives uh, breast milk for the child, the other one gives uh, uh, powder milk. Which child will be a healthier child? The same rule applies here also. So now you have to think which type of farming we need, that's all. So here the importance is now we try to preserve the soil and we want environmental friendly activity. We don't want to disturb the soil microbial entity and also the environment. We want to preserve everything. We, uh, we preserve the water also and environment also and soil also. So it is the need of the hour that we have to preserve our soil now. So those who are willing to do organic farming, you are going to uh, do eco-friendly activity here. So your farm is going to become a resort now. So all kinds of birds, all kinds of beneficial insects, everything, they are in search of resort, resort now. They are in search of resort now. They will come and stay with you. So uh, in steadily, you will be building up the biodiversity in the soil and in the environment now. That is the need of the hour. That is the message given by Masya, Gurus now to you. Now, 
I have to tell you another aspect what is happening in the soil. First, we must understand what are all the uh, things that is happening permanently in the soil. So, top layer, now we have applied uh, the organic matter. The organic matter in turn is either in the form of animal waste or plant waste. For that, a common term is organic matter. So, top soil, now we are having organic matter rich. That is the feed for the microbes. So, uh, that is uh, decomposed in two forms. One is in the form of humus and underneath in the form of organic carbon. So, the thing is, for a, in a fertile soil, the Bolker says, top layer, you must have 10% microbial activity. Now, one Mr. Dr. Andrew Liu, he is the chief scientist, Organic Federation of Australia. He is the number one scientist there. He did research in organic carbon content of the soil. And his research, he found out, if you are having, by testing your soil, and if the soil contains 1% organic carbon content in the soil, then you will have a buffer stock of 10 to 15 tons of humus in the, as a stock in the top layer 9 inches. That is very, very important. So this organic matter is converted into humus and organic carbon content. So now I correlated this thing with uh, the Volker and uh, Andrew. So if you are having 1% uh, organic carbon, then you should have 10% of microbial activity there. Because you are having 10 to 15 tons of uh, humus as a stock there. This you have to understand. Uh, if you build up 1% organic carbon content, then you will have 10 to 15 tons of humus as a buffer stock. Thereby, you will have 10% of microbes in the soil. By improving organic carbon content, what is the benefit out of it? Dr. Andrew explains. If you are having 1% organic carbon content in the soil, then whatever crop you grow, for that crop, 90% of uh, nutrients can be fulfilled by this 1% organic carbon. So, now we must understand how to improve the organic carbon content in the soil. If it improves well and well, automatically the nutrient management will be also fulfilled. Then uh, whatever crop you grow, that will give the maximum yield. So now you have to give importance how to improve the organic matter in the soil. In turn, humus content will be more and organic carbon will be more. What is the benefit of this organic carbon, you must understand. You are having a number of benefits in organic carbon, but exclusive two benefits are there. In the sandy soil, the particles are uh, separated. If the organic carbon is more, they bind the particles and it will make water retention and air moisture will be there. For that purpose, there the organic carbon binds each and every particle. Whereas in the clay soil, each and every particle is completely attached with each other. In that condition, if the organic carbon improves, they, they will detach each and every particle and make the soil loose. So on sandy, sandy soil condition, the activity is different done by the organic carbon and in the case of uh, clay soil, the activity is different there. But at the same time, one weakness is there. If one harvest, one crop is harvested, if you leave the soil to direct sun heat for 10 to 15 days, then the uh, organic carbon will evaporate. So to prevent that one, whatever crop is harvested, Within a week, you try to start the next cultivation without giving any gap. That is very, very important. For that purpose, we say, you immediately plough the soil and do multivariety seed sowing and allow it to grow. That is what we are telling. We are going to uh, produce poison-free foods. That is very, very important. Here, a farmer means he must get income also. And he is having a social responsibility to give the society, poison-free food. And third one, he is uh, preserving the environment. So three aspects are covered now. And uh, Dr. Andrew says another interesting thing. If the soil 
is having 1% organic carbon content, then this, that organic carbon will absorb in one acre, in one year, 10 to 15 tons of uh, carbon dioxide sequestration takes place. So, by growing, not only by growing, you are going to uh, have uh, ca reduce the ca carbon dioxide emission. By doing organic also, you can reduce the carbon dioxide emission. That is called carbon sequestration. So, uh, you are cleaning the air also. So, poison-free food, natural eco-friendly eco activity, and uh, preserve, uh, preserving the, bringing back the biodiversity in the soil, and you are also cleaning the air. These four benefits are done by doing organic farming.